Welcome, in this video I'm going to give you some intuition behind complex functions and complex derivatives. So I have a function here, f of z equals z squared, and f prime of z equals 2z, that pretty much follows the basic rules of calculus. Nothing new. What we really want to do now is look under the surface a little bit. So first of all, what does that mean? Take a look at this square above me. You have points a, b, c, and d, and you also have these little segments, little a, little b, little c, little d. And what we're going to do is take this, which is in a complex domain, in a complex plane, and we're going to transform it using our function. And then we'll see how we can approximate the transformations using 2z, the derivative. And notice that this square is very small. Now here it's clearly enlarged, but actually, you see, it goes from where a is, it's 1, and then to b, it's only 1.01. 1 .01. So it's 1 hundredth, that's the distance from a to b to c to d, to each of those segments. So it's very tiny, actually, okay? So let's take a look. What I'm going to first do is take point A, which has coordinates 1 plus i in the complex domain, and I'm going to square that, and it's going to give me 2i. So that's an image. In other words, when you take a value, you plug it into the squaring function, or pretty much any function, you produce an image. In other words, it's going to look like this. A goes to H, whereas H, H is, you can imagine, in a separate picture on the right side over here. So you see H is right here. That's 2i above my head, okay? Again, these are complex planes. Keep that in mind where the real axis is horizontal and the, and the imaginary axis is vertical. So 2i is above my head as point h now, essentially. Now take a look at the next stage. So what can we do next? So what we can do is take a look at the image of point b. So point b in the complex plane has the point coordinates 1.01 .01 plus i. When you square that, that's going to give you this 0 0.0201 plus 2.02 i. Where's the image of that point? Well, the image of that point on the right side is point e. And notice something has already happened. Because of the way this function is acting, it's z squared. You see what it's doing is it's taking that little a segment above my head, that segment from a to b, a little a, and it's making it into essentially into segment h. And notice that segment h is clearly longer than segment a. See that? That's one observation. And clearly also that segment from a to b on the left, on the right side, has been rotated. That's something interesting. How can we approximate this quantity from h to e on the right side? Well, what we can do is use this complex derivative 2z as follows. You can type that you're going to take 1 plus i squared. Now, what is that exactly? That is simply the image right here. That's point h. You're taking that. And to approximate getting to point e, you can use that complex derivative 2z by doing 2, which is basically from the derivative multiplied by i plus 1, where is that coming from? That's, those are just essentially the coordinates of point A in a complex plane. So it's i plus 1, or 1 plus i makes no difference. And then you multiply by this quantity 0 0.01. What is that exactly? That is just the length of the segment from A to B. That's it. The horizontal change. It's a differential, in other words, you see? So when you carry this out, it's going to give you this value 0 0.02 plus 2.02i. And notice this is pretty much identical to what we got above me right there. For just from taking 1.02i, I'm sorry, 1.01 plus i squared. See, these two values are identical as complex numbers. But this is how you can use this complex derivative in this position to approximate the location of point e. So and again, in other words, 1 plus i squared, remember, that's just point h on the right side. So that means that the multiplying 0.01 which is right here, above my head on the left side. When you multiply it by the derivative, which is 2 times i plus 1 over here, that has to both essentially stretch that differential, so it has to make that segment above my head bigger, and it has to take care of rotating it. That's what the complex derivative is doing, essentially, okay? Some kind of stretch and a rotation. Let's go on to the next point. So next I'm going to take 1 plus 1.01i with a square that, when I work that out, it gives us negative 0 0.020 plus 2.02i. Now, where is that image? That point is essentially the point f above my head. That new output complex plate above my head. How could I approximate this? Well, I could approximate it as follows. Take a look. So, I could do 1 plus i squared. Again, why am I doing that? I'm taking point a, passing it through the function that's going to give you point h right there. And then I'm going to take 2, multiply by i plus 1. What is that exactly? Again, that's just the value of the complex derivative at point A, essentially. And then I'm going to multiply by this quantity 0.01i. What is that? That's 
nothing but like a bit of the vertical complex axis. So in other words, it's just the segment, essentially little d, that goes from A to big D. But because on the left side and the right side both, we are in the complex plane, here you're going to have an I for that reason. You can't just have a number by itself, you see? Because that's like that would be like saying you're back to just being or moving along only the real axis. That's why you need that I present. And notice it produces the following once you carry everything out. Negative 0 0.02 plus 2.02i, which is pretty much the same as just what we found above by evaluating the function at that point uh, d. And notice on the right side, that's pretty much still point f, you see? So again, it's doing the same thing if you think about it carefully, right? 1 plus i squared, that's just h on the right side, nothing different. Then you take 0.01i, which is just on the left side, segment d essentially. And when you hit it with this complex derivative, the 2 times the i plus 1, that produces a little segment f above my head right here. And notice that that segment is rotated exactly the same way as segment h, and it's also essentially stretched. See that? So when multiplying 0.01i by 2 times i plus 1 has the effect of taking this quantity and stretching it and rotating it. That's what the complex derivative is doing. Okay, let's look at the next point. So I'm going to do one more point here. So that is, I'm going to take point C, which in the complex domain on the left has the coordinates 1.01 and 1.01i. When I square that, it's going to give me this exact output, 2.0402i. On the right side, as you can see, that's located right here. That's G above my head. Now I'm going to approximate it. So again, I'm going to take H right here. I'm going to do that as follows. I will type 1 plus I squared. So that's just the image of point A under Z squared to give you point H. You need a place to begin, obviously. Well, not obviously, but necessarily in a place to begin. And then you're going to take 2 plus I plus 1, which is just the value of the derivative. In other words, you're plugging it in there. And then you're going to multiply by 0 0.01 plus 0 0.01i. So what you're doing is the following. Where, what is this? 0 0.01 plus 0 0.01i? Those are pretty much the complex domain, if you like, just the, the coordinates of point C. But you have to be really careful because it's kind of like a differential, right? Look carefully. So for example, you see here it's 0 0.01. That is basically the length of that little segment A above my head. That's what the 0 0.01 means. Over here it says 0.01i, that basically is the length of little segment b, right here. That goes from big B to big C. So here you're multiplying by a kind of two-dimensional differential. Two-dimensional differential, that's what I meant to say. The point is, when you carry all of this out, take a look. It's going to give you 2.04i as the output. That is pretty much the same as right above my head, 2.0402i. In other words, it's still going to give you point g. So as before, what this is saying is the following, beginning with point C, right here. When you do 2 times i plus 1, multiplying basically the 0 0.01 plus 0 0.01i, you're taking that 0 0.01 plus 0 0.01i, and you're going to rotate it, and you're going to, for example, stretch it in some fashion also. So in other words, you're stretching, roughly speaking, it would be like the segment from A to C. You're going to stretch it. So now on the right side, it's like equivalent to going from H straight up towards G. That's how you have stretched it, you see? And clearly, you C is with one position on the left side. But as you can see on the right side over here, it's been rotated to the Y axis. So you have also rotated that point. On the right side, if you look very carefully, point E, F, and G have all been rotated by exactly the same number of degrees. And clearly H, F, E, and G have also been essentially stretched relative to the picture on the left side. So maybe on your own, what you should try to figure out is the following. What is the ratio of the areas? Try to figure that out, right? Try to figure out like the angle of rotation in terms of degrees or maybe radians. And then also maybe try to figure out the ratio of corresponding sides. Try to study it beyond what you see here. For those purposes, because those are essentially questions about geometry, ratios. What you can do is simply try to read off the coordinates of various points to the best of your ability. I think you should be able to do that between these two pictures and then try to answer those questions. Leave some comments down below. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in another video.